Did you know that amateur radio hobbyists send data packets all over the world all the time? They send it on the two meter hand band, specifically 144.390 megahertz. The packets contain GPS information, their call sign, and also some short messages. They can also contain telemetry and weather information too. The data packets on 144.390 sound like this. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to receive data packets using any two meter radio, including this Baofeng UV5R with its diamond antenna, and decoding those packets using uh, any type of computer. Specifically, I'm gonna be using my iPad. It should be interesting. Let's get going. Today, I'm back at Providence Park in Milton, Georgia. This is one of my favorite places to operate, not only because it's a great day outside, it's easy for me to get to, but it's relatively quiet, not a lot of people, and they've got some very nice picnic tables here. Ham send data packets using something called APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System. And if you've watched some of my videos, you may have seen me talk about APRS or even use it. Well, today I'm gonna to be decoding APRS packets. I'm gonna specifically be showing you how to set up your Baofeng with a iPad to receive and decode APRS. Now, you might be thinking, what's the practical use of APRS? Well, hams use it for any number of reasons. First of all, they use it to communicate, so two-way communication, right? They can send each other messages. Now, whether that's within local range of, of two meter VHF handheld range, you know, a mile or two, or maybe a little more if they're up on a mountain, or they can actually use the internet as well. So if the one ham is in range of an eye gate and so is the other, the message can go to the eye gate, go into the internet, come out the other side to that specific user, and they can exchange messages. The data packets contain GPS data, the amateur's call sign, and can also contain uh, a string of, of characters. So it can be a message or, or other type of data, maybe telemetry data. Uh, because of the GPS capability, they'll use it to track themselves. So if they go on a hike, if they go on a trip, they will occasionally beacon out an APRS packet that will report to the internet their position. It's really handy if you're out hiking by yourself Anyone can go check in, see where you are, see what you're up to. APRS also has several other capabilities, including sending email and SMS text messages. There are servers that monitor packets coming into the internet and will take those packets when formatted correctly and either forward an email to whatever email address you specify or send an SMS text message to whatever phone number you specify. So it's really handy if you're out of cell phone range, but you are within range of an eye gate, you're still capable of sending SMS messages as well as email. That's a pretty cool thing. Now, one of the more interesting ways I've seen APRS used is with high altitude balloon experiments. I've caught a packet every now and again of something very high up, 60, 70, 80,000 feet up in the air and moving at various speeds. But when you look at it on the map, using the internet, you can track that balloon and it not only sends positional information, but they also find a way to send telemetry, like uh, the amount of charge left in their batteries or the outside air temperature. So that's pretty cool. One of the most common ways APRS used is to report weather data. So amateur radio hobbyists will set up a weather station in their backyard or somewhere else, and they'll have it beacon APRS packets every once in a while with live weather information, including wind speed, temperature, dew point. I mean, whatever kind of data they can collect, they can put it out there. So if you go to APRS.fi right now, look in your area, I'm sure you'll find a weather station that has just put out a beacon recently about the weather in your area. Great way to get real time weather data for your area. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the equipment I'm using today to capture APRS packets. Like I said, I'm using my Baofeng UV5R dual band handheld radio. I'm gonna have it tuned to 144.390. I've got the diamond antenna attached. I'll put links to both of these down in the description of the video so you can buy them. This antenna will receive a little bit better than the stock antenna. 
I'm going to be using my iPad and I'm going to be using this APRS cable that has uh, the Baofeng attachment on one side and a 3.5 millimeter audio plug on the other that I'll use that to plug into the iPad. Let me show you how to set up the software. On my iPad, I'm using an app called APRS Pro. You can see on my iPad, I have Wi-Fi off. I'm not using the internet. And the first thing you wanna do is put in your call sign and whatever, whatever other information you need to put in. You can see my call sign K4BBL is right up at the top. I am going to go into menu and I'm going to select APRS settings and you can see that I've got RX which is receive via audio in or mic on and I've got TX transmit off. I've got RX via the internet off and TX via the internet off. So I'm not using the internet here at all. I'm just capturing local packets from either radios in my area or digipeters a little further away. When you go onto the map, when I hit back and you see the map, there are no stations listed right now because I haven't received any. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my radio and start receiving some packets. For best results, you're gonna to wanna to be as high up as you can possibly get. The higher the altitude, the longer the range you will be able to receive packets from. So if you can get up to a mountaintop or the top of a hill, even the top of a parking garage, you'll get better results. If you're down in a valley or surrounded by obstructions like buildings or hills, you're not going to get that great of a result. If you've ever received APRS, why don't you go ahead in the comments section and tell me about the coolest packet you've ever received. We're starting to receive some packets. They're showing up on the map. Let's take a look what we have. So far, you can see I've captured uh, quite a number of stations already. Uh, you can see on the map that I've got a nice spread, including a hospital, a car, a truck, uh, an individual user, not sure what this is. This is uh, Forsyth County Emergency Operations Center, EOC. I think that's what EOC stands for. Uh, that's cool. I've got a couple eye gates that I have received. Uh, so that's neat as well. If you want to uh, see the packets individually that I've received, you can go into menu, APRS monitor, and then you can see all the different packets that have come in. That's pretty cool. I'm going to let this run a little while and I'll come back when I have more, more packets that I've received. It is possible to uh, decode the packets without the APRS cable. You can simply hold your, uh, or place your device, your iPad, your Android tablet, your PC, close to the speaker of your radio. Just turn up the volume and let it decode using the internal microphone of the device. It's possible, but I find that when I use the cable, again, link down in the description, uh, when I use that cable, I get better results. I decode more packets. All right, so I finally got a weather station beacon. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I picked up a several more stations in my area, including this weather station, which is represented by a cloud and sun. And if you go to information, you can see that the current temperature is 64 miles an hour. He's not reporting on any rain or wind gusts, uh, but uh, yeah, He's reporting 66% humidity and 64 degrees here today. Beautiful day. So I can report that it's completely sunny. I've been here another 15 or so minutes capturing uh, packets coming in. So let's go uh, to the iPad to see which, uh, what I've got. I, you know, a total of maybe 15, 20 minutes of receiving packets. So let's take a look north of Atlanta. I've got a couple digipeters, eye gates. I've got, yeah, that's an eye gate and a digipeter as well. Uh, one weather station, a couple of a hospital, some emergency services. So a nice little mix of, of cars. Here's a car. They're currently uh, going 69 miles per hour speeding. One nice thing about the cars is that over time, you can see that blue track right there. Uh, I have the tail set, you can adjust it, but you can keep the trails of a car or other 
thing to keep track of where that car has been and estimate where it's going. Uh, kind of a neat feature over time and you can adjust that. You can also see that this particular uh, operator, K1, um, KI4NBY, also has a little message connected to his APRS beacon says call on 146.520. So if you were in range of him, you would know where to tune and uh, you could call out, uh, send out his call sign and get him on the air and have a QSO. Pretty neat. That's it for now. I'm going to stop collecting, but I hope you got the gist of it. It's pretty easy to buy an inexpensive uh, handheld ham radio, a cable, and use an existing device like a a laptop you might have or a Android tablet or iPad or iPhone, whatever you have, there's probably an APRS app for it. You can interface it with an inexpensive cable and start decoding the packets that are all around us all the time. And if you don't have any of that and you just want to see what's going on in your area, hit up APRS.fi, link in the description, and you'll be able to see all the ham radio APRS activity in your area. If you've stuck around this long, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. I sure enjoyed making it. Do all the normal YouTube things. Click the subscribe button, the bell for notifications, share it with your friends, and uh, hit the like button too. I appreciate it. That's it for me. This is K4BBL, and I'm Clear73.